Hi, my name is Rhonda Coston, and I am a makeup effects artist. I work in the um, TV and film industry. Um, it's very, very busy and very exciting. Um, the most rewarding career I've ever had. Um, I do also teach, um, which is really exciting because I don't think there's not a lot of people that really realize, unless they're actually in the industry already, how much work goes into each department in the film industry. Um, even though I'm a makeup effects artist, it's more of an umbrella. Because under that umbrella called makeup effects artist, you have to do much, much more than just the prosthetics that go on the skin. Um, I make props, I do theatrical veneers and dentures, um, I do blood gags, um, so like severed body parts, severed heads, um, prosthetic makeup, I do everything, including the regular makeup as well. So I have been a makeup effects artist professionally for um, about 11 years. Um, I do have my own uh, company called Real Twisted Effects. So I do have my own shop that I work out of. Um, so there's a, it's really, really important as a makeup effects artist to be well versed in both shop life as well as set life. Um, they are very much separate, but very, very important to create that end result of what the actors are going to be doing or be wearing on set. So, for instance, in the shop side of it, I might have to do life casting. I'll have to do a life cast of an actor's head or a life cast of their arms or legs or whatever the case may be in order to create a replica of those body parts. Um, I also uh, need to do face casts so I can sculpt prosthetics with clay on top of the the actor's life cast to create prosthetics that they will wear that are custom fitted to that actor. Um, I also do theatrical veneers and dentures which require doing dental impressions as well in the shop. Um, so there's the shop aspect of it is really really important. It's not all about going to set and just applying makeup because that's not there's so much more to it than just that. And it's important to know that before you hop into this career. <laughs> Here's some encapsulated silicone prosthetics. This is how I store them. I store them on foam boards so that you can protect the nice thin edges from getting crinkled or torn, that sort of thing. So that's how I store them. The course that I teach, uh, it's a lot of fun. It covers what's called basic makeup effects. And even in the industry today, this is very important knowledge to have on set. Because even after you're given a script by the director and you know it inside and out and you know all of the scenes that will require special effects, guaranteed at some point the director's gonna throw something at you that was not in the script then he suddenly decided he wanted in the script. and being a good makeup effects artist, you have to be able to just do it like that. So um, the idea behind make the basic makeup effects is being able to go to your effects kit and be able to just do what you've been asked to do, in, even if it's totally out of the blue. So I've had scenes where somebody was going to get shot, but they were not going, going to see it on camera. They were only going to imply it with the sound, but you don't actually see it happen. And then suddenly on set, they say to you, oh, we're going to do a quick shot of the bullet wound but I wasn't prepared for that. So I would have materials in my kit to create very quickly and efficiently a realistic looking bullet wound. So these are one of the things that you will learn during this course is how to create bullet wounds, um, bruising, lacerations, um, frostbite, things that, that you just get thrown at you on set that you have to create in a pinch. Um, also, bald cap creation as well as application. These are things that, believe it or not, are quite often required on set as well. And being able to make your own bald caps um, is, is, saves you so much because a lot of the times if you go to buy a bald cap, the edges are extremely thick and very difficult to um, blend with the skin. Whereas if you're making one yourself, you can make the edges as thin as you need them to make them disappear and blend. 
So this is an extremely helpful um, introduction course to uh, makeup effects artistry. Um, and it can also, for some people, it might be the deciding factor as to whether they want to continue on to the next level of that and actually maybe even pursue a career in the film industry. So I, I have put together a very, very short and very basic um, demonstration on how to apply encapsulated silicone prosthetics because I thought maybe it would be an interesting thing for you guys to see as the audience. Um, I also included a little bit of my practical effects demo reel for some of the films that I've worked on. So you can see how that looks actually on film, on camera. With a f
yank it out. Fine. Okay, on three. One, two, three. Oh, Jesus, put it back in, put it back in, put it back in. Okay, okay. Best manicure ever. Oh, it's going there anyway. <laughs> I can feel it. I am. I'm worried it's going to be a little cold. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I have sculpted, um, for all of you Game of Thrones fans, my own version of the Dragon Scale disease, which is sculpted in Chavant clay on this side. Um, eventually, what I did is I poured some silicone over top of that and created the negative mold, which is this here. This is the cured silicone negative mold. So from this, the actual prosthetic will be made. It'll make more sense when you actually see it finished and applied to the person. So I have just demold um, my prosthetic appliance, so it is actually ready to be applied. Um, so it should be interesting to see how it looks. My uh, model is my husband today, so we'll see how all that goes. So this is my husband, and he has graciously um, decided to be my model today and I'm going to apply what's called an encapsulated silicone prosthetic and it's kind of interesting because for all those Game of Thrones fans it's um, kind of that dragon scale disease so it'll be fun Let's see if I can this is an encapsulated silicone prosthetic and as you can see it's kind of scaly looking it'll make more sense once, it, once it's actually on his face First thing that I need is a little bit of adhesive, and this is Prosade medical grade adhesive. It's great for applying prosthetics. Okay, so I've just applied um, a layer of adhesive to the prosthetic, and I'm just going to stick it on his face where I wanted to put it. So I think it goes the other way though. It goes this way. Pulling the the edges out to make sure that they don't wind up turning. Into the darkness. This around the outside, this is all called flashing. So all of that is going to blend away, and it'll leave a really nice uh, blended edge that I can color and make it match the skin. Okay, now that I have it all stuck down to his skin, now I'm going to use a little bit of 99% alcohol on a Q-tip, and I'm gonna go around and remove all of this flashing, which leaves a nice blendable edge. And the alcohol actually melts away the silicone. Of an interesting process. So very satisfying. 
You can see how the edge here is coming away nicely. So as you can see, um, I've removed all of the flashing around the edges of this prosthetic. Um, now I have to color it to make it match his skin and then I'm gonna add all the gory details. Using uh, Real Creations alcohol activated color for his skin. It actually is a theatrical product for prosthetics. Um, and I'm just gonna color match his skin first. So he is quite tanned, so I need to take away this light pale pinkness, because obviously that's not him. And for that, I'm gonna use the alcohol color on a I don't know if you can see that, it's a flicker brush. It's just a little paintbrush with the bristles cut off the end. And I'm just going to flick the color at him. Let's keep your eyes closed for a second. charcoal color on top of that. I'm just going to use this sponge and I'm going to dab this color on to make it look like it's kind of scaly and irritating. Now I'm going to also flick some on there too. and I really want to make um, the cracks in the skin really pop so I'm gonna go in with a really bright red in those cracks. And I'm using a detailing brush for that which is a very fine tip. So as you can see, I've gone in with also some black where the where the um, disease is the worst, where it is the most irritated. So now that I've gone in with some black, I'm going to go over again with a little bit of a, um, an orangey red color in the cracks. And then I'm also going to create some black veining where this is kind of concentrating on, on this diseased part of the skin. So we'll do some of that. So now I'm going to go into the cracks with some liquid blood, a stage blood for, for that, and that will um, further give it the appearance of depth in the cracks. And that should hopefully be how it's going to be finished. You can see that I've added all the little black veining bits. Um, I will be doing a little close-up um, shot of this. So that is my version of the dragon scale disease. 
So this is an extreme close-up. So you can see how the how well uh, blended the edges are. Um, and that is why in the film industry they use encapsulated silicone because it does blend so well and it moves just like the skin, like real skin.